This is Hannibal here from the Hannibal TV. Dot com and today is my special guest. I have Miranda Gordy, who is the daughter of the legendary WWE Hall of Famer Terry Gordy. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Happy to be talking to you. I was a, a big fan of your father, and I think it's cool that you're following in his footsteps getting into the wrestling business. Thank you. Thank you. I have, uh, you know, I haven't been in the business long, but I've enjoyed every minute of it. So thank you. Was that something that you always thought you were going to do or have you just kind of fell into it in recent years if for getting into the wrestling business? Um, yeah, I, it, I just kind of fell into it. Obviously wrestling has always been there since I was born. It's always, you know, uh, I've been at shows. I watched my dad. I've done, uh, you know, special things for him. It's always been there. Um, I really didn't think I would ever get into actually wrestling. Um, though I enjoyed it as a kid and stuff, uh, as an adult, it was never really something that it was a goal, but, uh, one day I just decided I, let me try this thing, you know, and, uh, it, it's worked out pretty well so far. Were you uh, following your brother's career when he was in the wrestling business? I, I met him actually a couple times uh, in Deep South Wrestling. Uh, he was a pretty good wrestler. I think he was teaming with Luke Gallows in WWE when Gallows was doing that Festus gimmick. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I kept up with it. You know, I would watch Ray on uh, TV and so he was Jesse as Jesse, you know, Jesse and Festus uh, and Slam Master J and he did his Deep South stuff and uh, I kept up with him. And um, now uh, I'll text him or, or I'll actually I'll go to Georgia and stay with him sometimes and it'll just be like you know, big wrestling family stuff and he'll give me advice on what to do and he'll critique my matches and uh, you know, get me ready for the next thing. So uh, he's he's been a lot of help in my career so far. Is he still wrestling or has he moved on to other projects now? Uh, when he left the WWE, oh my gosh, it's been like, what, 10 years ago now? Um, something like that. He actually became a police officer and he's been doing that ever since. That's pretty cool. So, you know, <laughs> Do uh, uh, he has not wrestled? I've been trying to kind of like put it in his ear. Maybe like I think he's thought about it um, because he was passionate about it and he did it for a long time. And I've been trying to, uh, you know, at least maybe us do a match or something. Like just get in the ring and work out with me. <laughs> Especially now with the popularity of mixed tags and intergender wrestling, that's probably a team that a lot of people would like to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People have reached out like, hey, why don't you, uh, uh, you know, get him on board or get uh, Buddy Roberts Jr. Uh, Buddy Roberts' son um, was wrestling. He kind of quit, too. But I've been trying to talk either one of them into coming and let's form an attack team. <laughs> you and your brother against Tessa Blanchard and her new husband, Daga, would be a good one. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's there's. Definitely several, uh, even, you know, st other second generations like uh, Brian Pillman Jr., um, Cody Rhodes. There, there's tons of uh, guys. At Rachel Ellering is another second gen. There's tons out there. It, it could be like a huge thing. Did you play any other sports before you got into wrestling? Because you look like you were almost a power lifter or, or into some heavy lifting. You, you looked very strong. Oh, thank you. Um, I, that's like an awesome compliment. Uh, no, um, I guess maybe because I do farm work. Uh, I lived up before I got into wrestling. I asked actually, uh, rescued horses and stuff and, uh, I had a big ranch. And so, you know, throwing bells of hay and, uh, just doing farm stuff, gardening and, and whatever. Um, I'm also just, I'm built bigger. I'm a bigger woman. I have broad shoulders and stuff. Uh, sports that I played, I guess, uh, like in high school and stuff, I did swim team. As a kid, I did taekwondo and ballet. Taekwondo, how far did you make it in that? 
Uh, I did it for a few years. I was a kid. Like, uh, you know, so before 11, like in the late 90s, um, I did it a few years and did some tournaments. Like I had uh, almost became a black belt before we like moved to Georgia and stuff. Um, I have some, yeah, trophies, I guess. (laughs) So not long, like I didn't make a career out of it or anything. So as far as your professional wrestling training, who was the one that actually got you trained to to fight in the business, I guess? Um, my main trainer, his name is Knight Davis, and he ran XCW out of Texas, uh, probably like a decade ago or so. And, uh, you know, it was a big deal. One of the biggest promotions in Texas at the time. And, uh, like he just kind of out of the kindness of his heart took me in cause I wanted to train and, uh, show me all the ropes and got me ready. He promised me that he would, you know, get me ready to face the world and, you know, I, he did. He did an excellent job. And I've had a lot of influences as well that helped me get there, like Tom Howard and, uh, you know, Amber Moon did a little bit of training with me, too. So uh, I've had a lot of good people. Obviously, I have some good influences like Michael Hayes and, and my brother and just growing up around it, uh, watching my dad's stuff. Um, mostly that that's the most tape study that I do. But, yeah, all of that has been a, a big influence in my career so far. When you wrestle, do you pattern your style after your dad as a as a bigger girl? Like, I guess you could have a similar style that, that he had because he was also bigger than most of his opponents. I do. Uh, what, you know, my trainer and, and everybody else is like, just absolutely emulate him. You know, do what he does, his movements, his moves. Um, cause it would, I, I am bigger than a lot of girls. There are some girls that are bigger than me, but for the most part I am bigger. And so I can do the power moves and, and that's, you know, I don't have to do a lot of stuff. I can take it slow and just, uh, you know, nothing high flying or anything like that. It's just like him. And that, that's exactly what I want to do. So it, it works out perfectly that I, I get to copy his style. Have you been, I guess, not wrestling during this lockdown situation or is there still been companies around where you are that are running? I think you're living in Texas or no, you're living in uh, Kansas City now, I think. Um, so when we initially had the lockdown, um, I think I went about uh, like three or four weeks, maybe close to a month, not doing any wrestling and that was fine. I was like, cool, we'll heal, and then it'll pass over. And uh, we actually started a little, like, nothing big, a little uh, studio-style promotion called Viral Pro. Me and, and my boyfriend, um, Craig Keys, when he goes by now, it's Plonk. Uh, we started Viral Pro, and it's studio-style, and we had just some friends who were totally cool with coming up and, and filming some stuff. Uh, we filmed some, like, internet you know, wrestling shows and, uh, people could purchase those online and pick who they wanted, you know, to wrestle who and all that just as like a side project and to keep us fresh. And, and it gave, uh, the wrestlers something that they could, uh, give out to the world, you know, to get them booked and stuff like, cause it's the, it's quality production. Uh, we had an actual camera guy come in and, and so we got to do that. Then, uh, SWE, um, and a couple other promotions were just like, we're going to carry on, you know, things are starting to open back up. Uh, we're, we're not going to let this slow us down. And so for the most part, I've actually continued to do shows. And as far as growing up, watching your dad wrestle, is there any favorite feuds of his that stand out or, or favorite matches going back and studying his tapes that you've liked to watch of his? Uh, yeah, so I have two favorites. Um, one would be uh, him versus uh, Kenta Kobashi, and then the other one would be um, one of the Masawa matches at All Japan. And uh, I grew up, uh, I was born in 89, and I grew up with my dad going to Japan all the time. So I grew up with the Giant Baba and the Stan Hansons, the Bruiser Brodies and stuff like and the Masawa and Kenta and, and all of that. Um, versus the Freebirds, it was kind of more the 80s. Like, I just wasn't born yet. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, Michael's like a godfather to me, and I love Buddy and Jimmy Jam. Uh, but I grew up with 
Um, I think one of the first actually tag teams that I remember is my dad teaming with Stan Hansen. So that's what I grew up with. And that's kind of what I like to watch is all Japan. And, and so those would be my favorite matches. Have you had any contact from Japanese promoters wanting to bring you over prior to the lockdown? Because it seems like it would be a natural fit to bring you over there with your father's legacy. Uh, I actually went to Japan for the first time in February. Uh, so I went uh, at the end of February and, you know, everybody was already in mask and stuff over there and it had, the virus had not hit over here. At least uh, we didn't know much about it then. And as soon as I get back, everything starts going on lockdown, but uh, I did go to Tokyo and I wrestled for uh, Tokyo championship wrestling, which is run by Jimmy Suzuki. And I also wrestled for uh, DDT pro. Uh, and that was both were so amazing. And like, I, I hope to go back soon. That would probably, and, and to keep going, uh, that'd probably be my ultimate goal is to do like my dad did when I was growing up in frequent Japan. There's a fan on here that wants to know, when did you know your father was a scary badass and were you ever scared of him growing up? Uh, no, he was my dad. Um, so, you know, I, I get asked a lot, uh, like, you know, what was it like growing up with a wrestler? I mean, he was my dad. Like, he took us to go get ice cream. We went bike riding. Uh, you know, all he did dad stuff with us. So it's not like... You know, he wasn't a scary wrestler to me. Uh, uh, that's he, he was just my dad. Um, but yeah, no, watching him, uh, he has he's my favorite wrestler. So, um, like I said, he's who I try to emulate and copy and all that. And and so, uh, he is a badass. <laughs> you always hear about the the wrestlers from the eighties and nineties bringing back cool toys from Japan to their kids. Was there any? toys that he brought you back that you couldn't get in the u.s um we always i remember as kids people would always compliment uh our clothes and stuff uh he would bring us just cute like hello kitty obviously you know it comes from there and he would bring us cute hello kitty stuff and people would always want to know where we got it from and obviously Japan and, and just cute outfits and purses and, and jewelry. And, uh, yeah, I think there was some toys and stuff that, that we had. Uh, and I have a sister that's close to my age too. And when I say we, uh, and so, so we had, you know, all kinds of stuff and people, uh, the wrestlers and stuff was into stuff too from Japan. And I, I had all kinds of, uh, stuffed animals, um, from when I was born that they send, you know, as a, as a present. There's a fan out here with a good question. Have you ever met or ran into Lacey Von Erich, uh, one of the second generation Von Erich wrestlers? Um, I had the chance to meet her. Uh, I think it's close to two years now. Um, her, Kevin Von Erich and his two boys came to UNT, which is, uh, you know, the North Texas university. And, uh, there was a show there for, for, uh, world-class. He had all of them come and I, I got to meet her and talk to Kevin and, uh, Ross and Marshall then. So yes, I have met her. Do you have any funny Michael Hayes stories? He's known as being a bit of a wacky character. Uh, I have tons of funny Michael Hayes stories. Um, one that I always tell that's kind of cute is, uh, so when we were younger, my sister and I, uh, and my family, we all went to Michael's from Pensacola. So we, we would go down to Pensacola with him and, uh, you know, spend a week down there or whatever. And, uh, one time my sister and I had a boogie board and Michael came up and he's like, all right, I'm going to show you girls how to ride this thing. And it's one of those foam cheap boogie boards and he takes it and he goes and splashes on the, on it, on the water. It breaks in half. He, he gets out, no sells it, hands us the two pieces, like one piece to me, one piece to my sister, and just walks off. And we're like, what the heck, Uncle Michael? But yeah, I mean, he's like, it's not just a gimmick. Michael Hayes is like a, a legit character. So, <laughs> Did Michael end up having any kids? Or is he enough of uh, a kid for his wife? He, 
Um, the closest thing to a kid, uh, no, he does not have any like actual biological kids. Uh, but Hunter Hayes is, is a spinning image of him. So, uh, you know, it, it raises questions for sure. <laughs> What's Jimmy Garvin up to these days? He's kind of off the radar now. He became a pilot actually. Um, I saw him at WrestleCade in no last November. So, uh, you know, he looked like he was doing well and he's just like a, you know, keep to himself person. So yeah, he's doing well. He's a, he's a pilot. As far as your dad's friends, obviously he was very well liked in the business. Is there any in particular that have gone out of their way to help you break in? Um, I have had the chance, like I've run into multiple people that have worked with my dad and, um, you know, I'll get pointers. Like, uh, I met, um, Mick Foley last year. Uh, oh my gosh. Who else? Just, um, I'm trying to, think. it's been a busy year. Uh, anybody like, uh, Stan Hansen, um, James Beard is the ref. Tons of legends have come to me and obviously given me advice, but told me, have told me like what my dad meant to them, which has been worth more than anything in my career ever to, to be able to have them tell me about him. Cause obviously he, he passed when I was very young. So all of the stories of hearing what a great person he was to all of them really like, that's what keeps me going in all of this. Carlos Ray is asking if you think Michael would ever help you get into the WWE eventually. He's one of the writers there, I believe. Um, I, you know, I think that it would come down to uh, my work, um, you know, and, and the opportunity. And uh, I'm trying to do this just like everybody else. So I, I think it would more come down to that. Is there any company like WWE or AEW or, or Impact or Ring of Honor in the U.S. that you kind of like over the others that you would be interested in wrestling for? Uh, well, WWE would be the ultimate goal um, as far as a promotion in the States, uh, just because it's the it's the top, you know. Um, but I would not mind working for any of those other companies either. Whatever happened with the Freebirds' first run in WWE there? It looked like they were going to get a big push. I always heard the rumor that they did something to piss off Andre the Giant, and he kind of kiboshed their big run that they were going to get. Do you know the true story to that? Um, yeah, I've read the story. Uh, I, at the time, my dad, I think, was... Uh, had a bigger opportunity at all Japan. Uh, when I was a kid, he was, we were doing very well. So his career there, I think he felt, um, would be better for him as opposed to still continuing with the free birds in the WWF. Um, and Michael had Jimmy jam and they kind of started their even more rock and roll rock star gimmick. And, uh, you know, my dad made his appearances or whatnot, but I, I just honestly think it came down to him having a, a singles career and going to Japan and it being a bigger success for him. What did you think about the executioner gimmick that he was doing in the WWE in the 90s? I believe he feuded with Mankind. Um, so I do. Uh, that's some of the first stuff um, that I remember. Obviously, I was very young. Uh, watching uh, my dad on TV. Now, obviously, I'd watched stuff before, but I think I was only like six. So, so uh, I remember watching the uh, the pay per view with Undertaker and Mick Foley, and my dad coming out and burying the Undertaker or whatever. And uh, so, um, I mean, it was it was just another thing. I was uh, young. He in '93 he went into a coma, so he just was not the same person when he came out of it. Uh, I think that it's a huge feat that he went into a coma and had to relearn everything, uh, you know, who people were and 
how you know had to walk go to therapy for walking and to come back and continue to wrestle uh that's a huge feat so uh but he wasn't the same when he came back so which is kind of why they they did the executioner gimmick um to protect him and see what he could do on a huge stage like that and uh you know if if he couldn't perform um it still kind of protected his legacy were you happy of course you probably were when you found out that he was getting put in the wwe hall of fame i was i was happy for it to finally happen um i had gone to the hall of fame when they were in atlanta um and you know and was kind of hoping that they were going to do it that year, which would have made sense to me. But the fact that they did it in Dallas was equally just as fantastic because of the history at the Sportatorium. But I was so excited for it to finally happen because I think it was long overdue. And uh, it was a really great weekend, obviously had all the family there. Um, and so I, I've enjoyed it a lot. And I think that it, it should have happened a long time ago, just because of the, uh, you know, the big impact of wrestling history that the Freebirds had. Of course, everyone remembers the Freebirds Bad Street USA video. That was probably a little, I don't even think you were born when it came out, but I'm sure you saw it in later years. It was one of the first music videos I can recall in wrestling. Uh, what did you think of it? And did you like the actual song? Um, so yeah, it came out way before I was born. Um, I mean, it's my, uh, well, I started out with my entrance music, um, the original version. Now I do a cover, which, uh, if you haven't heard, it's from Crossfire. They did an amazing job. Um, and I use that as my entrance music now. Um, I mean, I, I like the song. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've definitely heard Michael sing it a million times, uh, live, um, for no reason. So, I, I mean, it, it's a, it's a catchy song. It gets stuck in your head. There's a fan on here that says your father's death was one of the hardest things to hit the wrestling world. Good luck to you. And he hopes to see you wrestling soon from Carlos Ray. Oh, well, thank you. It was hard on a lot of people. So, and it's still hard sometimes, but you know, Ed, his legacy lives on and that's really what counts. Now, as far as Bad Street USA and the bad reputation that the Freebirds had, do you have that side to you too? Is there anything bad or wild you've done over the years that you could share with us? Um, well, uh, as far as wrestling, I have—I mean, I've been a baby face this whole time, but uh, you know, I, I think maybe soon. Uh, Hopefully soon I get to release a little free bird, you know, the, <laughs> the natural born free bird in me. So uh, you'll have to just stay tuned and, and follow my career to see how that goes. Who are some of the female wrestlers out there that, that you would like to work with? I'm going to guess Charlotte Flair might be up there. Oh yeah. Uh, Charlotte Flair is definitely a big one. Um, you know, even Tessa Blanchard as a second generation uh, working with. I actually have a match with Thunder Rosa. She's like on top of the world right now. Um, I have a match with her coming up this month, and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, another person I actually just recently wrestled was Jordan Grace, and that was someone that I uh, was really looking forward to wrestling. Um, there's there's a ton of really, really great women out there. Um just a long list uh, of people that I would be more than happy to work with. Would you ever want to work with Tessa Blanchard? She's one of the top free agents right now in wrestling. I think she's doing independent dates again at wrestling in Chicago sometime this month. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I have people reach out all the time. They're like, Oh, why don't you and Tessa Blanchard have a match? And I would, totally be down to uh have a match with her where can people book you if they want to look you up if they're an independent promoter uh watching this video i have uh you know twitter instagram and facebook uh you can look me up by my name um miranda gordy it's all under miranda gordy you can you can find me super easy
they can uh, reach out to me there. Um, just send me a message if they want to book me or have questions or just want to see, you know, you know, anything that I put out into the world. Have you wrestled up here in Canada yet? I have not, but I would also love, I've never visited Canada. Uh, so I would love to, especially if I, you know, got the opportunity to also wrestle there because there's a lot of wrestling history that's come from there too. So I think that would be a great opportunity. DJ Tony Snow says he's called over a dozen of your matches, and every time you get in the ring, you're better than the time before. I love DJ Tony Snow. He's my buddy. So, yeah, he does. He calls a lot of my matches, and so I definitely take that uh, uh, as a compliment. There's a fan on here asking if you know about your dad's role in Highlander. Oh, I do. Absolutely. Um, at the beginning of the, the movie, which uh, I knew about the movie as a kid. So, uh, you know, and I would watch that part and um, I would show my friends and stuff like, hey, my dad was in this movie. But uh, I never watched the whole movie until recently. But it's a great movie. Like, I totally watch it again. Like, the whole movie's great. Now, you mentioned earlier in this interview that uh, you rescued horses. I'm going to guess that means that you ride horses as well. I do. Um so right now I'm, I'm, since I travel and wrestle and I don't have time for that anymore. Um, I only have one horse. She's a thoroughbred. Um, she's about 12 years old and like, I just hang out with her all day, uh, and, and ride her when I can, like I can't today it, it's raining. So yeah, just, just the one now. And as far as there's a fan on here asking how old were you when your dad wrestled, you were very young, right? You, uh, you don't have much memories other than the, the WWE years, I guess. Uh, I mean, I was born in 89 and he passed in 2001. So anytime there, uh, you know, I, I went to shows, NWA shows in Atlanta, uh, WCW shows, um, I'm sure I went to WWF shows. Actually, yeah, no, I, I do know I went to WWF shows. Uh, the I think the only place I didn't actually go to a live show would would be Japan, um, and then you know some stuff on TV, and then independent stuff all the time. I would uh, go to the the smaller type shows and be out in the crowd rooting them on. So I I mean I've seen him wrestle a, a ton of times. And you mentioned you patterned yourself after him. Is there any female wrestlers out there that you kind of looked up to growing up and you kind of patterned yourself after as well? Oh, of course, China. I love, so I grew up with, uh, you know, the Attitude Era. And uh, and at the same time, like I'd get done watching DX on WWF and then switch over and watch Xena Warrior Princess. And so like two badass women were totally my idols growing up. So I really look up to uh, China. And last question here. Goomer Doctor is asking your favorite memories of the Von Erich feud. I know it was before your time, but I'm sure you've watched the tapes and YouTube videos in recent years. Uh, yeah, the feud was definitely before my time. Um, you know, I, I think any of the matches were just great. Uh, the storytelling, the whole feud. Uh, I, the, the big one was they were at Texas Stadium and they had the, the come as you are match. And you see a full Texas Stadium and it's just unbelievable. I think that's probably the most well-known, you know, uh, Michael Hayes is strutting to the, the ring and they get there and, you know, the crowd's booing them. And then all of a sudden the Von Eric music hits. And, and it's just kind of like, it makes you, you know, gives you a little like tingles, like, cause it was so big back then and it's such a big thing. And they did uh, historical stuff with it. I, I think that's probably one of my favorite. I've seen on your Twitter profile that you have a bad street USA shirt. I guess fans could order that at uh, pro wrestling tees if they want to pick up one of your shirts. Uh, yeah, all of, uh, I have, um, like a t-shirt of my dad and then all of my merch, uh, as far as t-shirts is on pro wrestling tees and you can just look up Gordy, Terry Gordy or Miranda Gordy. 
And you mentioned how uh, you're a farm girl and you're naturally strong. What is your bench press, uh, squat, and deadlift for any of the, the workout addicts watching this that are curious? Uh, you know what? I have never done like a max, honestly. I've never just, I don't know. Uh, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> You should do a YouTube video of you trying out your your uh, max lifts because I know you have a YouTube channel too. Yeah, uh, yeah, I kind of have a YouTube channel. I should probably put more stuff on it. It's just stuff from like my early matches. Um, yes, if I ever try to max out, I'll I'll gladly record it for everybody to see. But you know, if I max out, I would just want to do more and more. You know, so it, it would never end. <laughs> well i appreciate you taking the time to to speak with us hopefully we'll have you on again in the future i wish you the best of luck with your career and i was wondering to close this off if you could give people a sample of your promo and just maybe pretend you have a match coming up with charlotte flair what would you tell charlotte flair if you guys were going to wrestle uh Oh, what would I tell her? You know, as a second generation uh, to second generation, uh, I think we would just battle it out. You know, uh, I, you know, I'd show her a little bad street. Uh, she's got the the flare thing going on. I got a little free bird thing going on. So I, I just have to show her what bad street's all about. Uh -huh.